Rene, the camera is on. Read that, read that, read that. We want to enjoy that with you. And then... Go ahead. The camera is rolling. We are on. Is that, is that chapter what? Uh -huh. Verses um, 13 through 16. Okay. Esther answered, If it pleases the king, may the Jews who are in Susa also have tomorrow to carry out today's law. And may the bodies of Haman's ten sons be hung on the gallows. The king gave the orders for this to be done. Wow. For a law was announced in Susa, and they hung the bodies of Haman's ten sons. Go ahead, tell us what, what is coming to you from this. Well, when you were talking about, you know, them trying to kill your seed, mm -hmm. I always admired the story of Esther. I don't know why, but it has always stuck to me like glue. But one of the things I was most proudest of her for doing is that in the in, at the end of the story, despite the fasting, the praying, everything that was done, them getting, you know, their people back, their people free, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Esther had enough sense and wisdom to go before the king and ask him for the seed of Haman. Yes. And to me, that was to cut off the generation yep. because it was going to repeat itself. Yes. That spirit was still alive. Yep. And so she cut it off yep. in that way just yep. from that one unique request. Yep. And that's my favorite part of the story of Esther. Got it. And what did you say about if you don't do this, this will happen? What, what was that? If you don't kill them, they will kill you. There you go. I hope every one of you, you are listening because these are the deeper things of the scriptures, of sacred scriptures that we are dealing with here. This is not the bread and butter of the Bible. This is not what we go to do on Sunday morning, superficial religion and preaching and teaching that are worthless and of no use. In fact, let me tell you, Many of you are in church, and church will kill your seeds. I'm serious. You'll be in church, and church will destroy your seeds. Why, before we go to the next broadcast, I wanted us to chip this in. While I was doing this, and Rene was reading this out to us, that's why I so much love this woman. It's just, just crazy. Let me tell you something that just hit me. I am asked to tell all of you the world community. The reason why the invisible world of darkness is interested in the human race is to, is to mix with us and help us mix with each other in order to produce some degenerative, some stoppages in our DNAs, whether spiritual, mind, or physical, or in our physiologies, to produce something through relationships, through contamination with gods and goddesses, of darkness through some legal bondings and covenantal legislatures in order to stop your seed. This is interesting. Are you aware that the deluge, the flood, that wiped away the world of the days of Noah was done. It was a baptism. The flood, the rain, the, op the opening of the sky and the opening and the opening of the bowel of the earth. It was done in order to wipe the earth and the sky realm of the infiltration of the seeds of devils in human flesh. Jesus. 
Read, you will hear where the Bible says that the sons of God came. They saw that the, the daughters of the daughters of men were beautiful. They were not satisfied with their own beauty only. The devil wanted to use appetites, sexual appetite, marital appetites, intellectual appetite. Has always been the downfall of humans. That's what he well, that's what they used in capturing Adam and Eve, and that's what they used to begin to destroy the human race. Because if they can infiltrate the human race with alien forces, with alien forces, then they can stop our seeds. Yes. And not only stopping the, our seed, they will also uh, they will also legally make it impossible for the king to get back his kingdom on the earth. And so fallen angels came oh to earth. Fallen angels came to earth and had sex, mm. physical sex. We are not talking of in a dream. Mm. They did it through dreams. They did it through physical contacts. That is how giants, giants began to be born. People like the sons of Anak, Goliath, them, all those people, giants began to come. Yeah. Giants are just a little bit replicas of huge fallen angels that are out there. Mm. Huge ones. Because they are angels that are like 22 feet tall. They are angels that are higher than skyscrapers. I hope you know that. Mm. that there are angels that are bigger than buildings. When they move, the entire earth shakes. And this is, we are only talking about fallen devils. You've not yet talked about God's own. What is in the sight of God? One angel from God can wipe away the entire human race within one hour. One angel from God's territory can wipe everything out, wipe all of fallen angels and all of us. One, one, just one. It was one that was sent to Egypt and Pharaoh was forced to tell the Israelites, you can now go. Just one. And that one was not the huge ones. <laughs> that is why you are in a kingdom that you have no idea. Are you aware that the angel sometimes, the angel that God sent to come and be in your room and watch over you when you are sleeping, that that angel is bigger than your city? When that angel come to your territory, everything, in fact, when they even hear of that angel coming, every other power flee. Because there will be no space for that angel to move into. So, I mean, I mean, la, 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 la. Mm. Mm. And look at how important you are. And the angel is standing there 24 7 watching over you. And some of us, God allowed those angels to be our, our name. Like my angel, when you call me Idika. Not just me that turns around to say, hello, can I speak to you? My angels is interested because he thinks that he too is being summoned. That's why if you are bearing the name of an ex, go and get rid of his name. Amen. <laughs> I'm asking you tonight, if you are bearing the name of somebody you don't like, parents who treated you wrongly, evil ancestors, Go and change that name very quickly because there will be a place you reach in the class of the higher people of God that your angel is going to be your name. 
And mind you, when you are flying, you will not just be buying an A ticket for yourself, but invisibly, they are traveling with you. Wow. That's why by the time I reach residence in, somebody was waiting to get my thing from the, from the car. Take it straight to my room. It's like everything was arranged for me. The way I wanted things to be, everything was arranged. I have never been there, but everything was put together for me. Why? There's somebody behind the scene walking. They told me that Residence Inn is going to charge me this, for this, for that, for that. Those that book my, 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 my flight and my hotel, I finished, I left, those people didn't charge me a penny. <laughs> You'll be sleeping in the night and a voice tell you, go and write a thousand dollar check and send it to Bishop Edikai Mary. And you will think, oh, it's just your mind deceiving you. It's your angel telling you. You go to the internet, you did it, or you send a check out. Next morning, somebody send you ten thousand dollars. Let me tell you a story. I told a guy, did you and your father make up before he died, before he passed on to heaven? He said, no, that they were quarreling. He didn't even see his father. Do you know where he was buried? He said, yes. I said, enter the car. On Friday, we are going. On the way, you buy flowers for us to go and beg your father. I'm telling you what has happened, what I do. The other side of me that you guys don't know that that's what I'm going to be doing from now on. That's why I told you I'm not interested in all these prayer ministries. I'm going into the power thing. On the way to the cemetery where the guy was taking us to, I took my company's car and we left. On the way, I told him, do you have the flower? He said he doesn't have money. I said, you see, I don't like broke people. You don't have money and you retire from the Air Force and you don't have money, shame on you. I gave them my card, they ran, we pick a flower. So when you get the money, you pay me back. We went to his father's grave. I told him, put that flower on your father's grave. I make sure it was his father's name, I saw it. And the other, and the other be, be, beside his father's grave was his mother's grave. And the family members who have pass on, their bodies were there, just around that one place. I said, put the flower on your father's grave, he did. Step outside. Tell your father that you've come to make up with him. He's here, he's listening. He's in heaven, but he has come down to listen because he has been waiting and saying, when are you coming to make peace with me? That's what I heard. That's why all those people who tell you they hear from the dead and tell them that I'm coming to give them a run for their money. And I say, you make up with your father. So I step outside. But I was eavesdropping. So he talked to his father and they make up. I said, give him a hug. He hugged the A. I said, now tell your father how difficult things has been with you and that you want things to change. So he told him what he has been doing, how nothing has worked. He ended up in a homeless shelter. I was a supervisor of men's shelter somewhere. So that's, that's how he found me and he said he want me to do some spiritual things for him. Listen to this. When he finished telling his father how things were, I said, tell him you want change. So he told his father he wanted a change. What kind of change? He told him. He wanted this, he wanted this, he wanted this. So good. When he finished, I said, step out. Then I step in, I say, I'm the one that brought your son here. I need to be paid for my service. He doesn't have a dime, he's broke. So you guys should find money wherever and give to him so that he will pay me and from that money that you guys will send, I'm going to find him a good apartment in the right side of town. I'll get him a car. 
and I'll put the rest in his savings and I'll take what belongs to me. And I said, thank you, sir. And we entered the car and we came home. That was on Friday afternoon. <sighs> Sunday night, around, I think around 11 o'clock at night, somebody was knocking at my house, at my door. I said, who is knocking at my door when I have two little identical twin girls in the house? Who is knocking at my house at this time? So I thought maybe people have flown into town without telling me that they needed me to do some spiritual work for them. They should have told me. So I look at the pigeonhole and it was this fat boy. He's very big. He's like about 600 pounds or more. He's very big. So I came out, I said, I said, Pokey, because that's his nickname. What are you doing here? He said, I believe that you are more than what you tell people. There's something that has happened. I said, what is it? He smiled. He came and he hugged me. He didn't know what to do with me. You know, you know, I can't hug him back because he's so big. So my hand cannot go around him. He's very big. I mean, if you see that guy's booty, it's, it's incredible. You see his waist, you see his belly, his shoulder. It's like, it's like, it's like, um, it's like, uh, what do we call it? The Hulk the, in the movie, it's huge. So I say, sit down. So we sat at the porch, because I don't allow such people into my, into my house that, I, I am training them. Those are people I'm training at out there to teach them basic way of changing their lifestyle. So I said, tell me what's the good news. Put his hand in his pocket and brought out a white envelope and said, here we go. We went to my father's grave on Friday. And do you know at the exact time that I was talking to my father on his grave, that's when the smell was sent. This smell was written at that time. This check was sent at that time and posted at that time. I said, well, how much is in the check? He told me is, I think, eight or 15,000 or more. 15,000 or more money. I said, are you kidding me? He said, no. I went inside the house. From my eyeglasses, look, I saw the money. I said, who are they sending money to you? Are you now scamming people or something, Pookie? He said, no. He said, when he left the Air Force, he had a job. And in that job, he got injured. And actually, you can see the injury in him. He showed me, he has shown me the injury before when I was counseling him. So, and he has told me the story some months back that when they went to the court, the judge dismissed it. He didn't have a lawyer because he can't afford one. So they dismissed the case and awarded it to the company. And he has to leave the job. But for what reason, this is like about 15 years ago or more. How is it that when this guy went, went and met up with his late father, I took him to his late father's, grave at St. Wells. I think that is the St. Wells. How is it that they went back on the case without calling him and they decided to pay him the money that he was entitled to? Can you believe that? A case that was dismissed by the judge, the company went back to do the right thing. And they send him a check. So I said, give me the check and leave. Go. He said, that's why I brought it to you before I start doing silly stuff. Because money is an enabler to me. I said, good. So go, go back, go back to the mission. He went. The following morning, I went to my office. He was already standing by my office door. He was now a brand new man. I see what money can do. He was now early. We went, first of all, I went and put half of the money in a checking, half in a savings, 
Then I took some that very day, went out and bought him a car, a Mercury Grand Marquis. And the steel, they have to adjust the bow so that it can go through him because he was so big. So you now have a car. That very day, I went and got him a job. I finished his program that day because there's no use keeping such a person. That very day, I got him accommodation, a one bedroom. That very day, I bought beds, bought dining, bought chairs, bought TV, everything that need to be bought. I bought them cheap, got some people. We set it up, pay them off. I took my own, what is my own money, left him with some cash. I wish him goodbye. Wow. Think about that. The week after that, I'm driving a Chrysler LeBaron. That's what I normally drive. And I've told an African-American guy who's married to an Italian woman with two kids, and he went into drugs and um, left the East Coast for the Florida coast or wherever. And I told him, you finish this program, you succeed, you get clean, you are going back to your wife and kid, and you can have my car. Because you guys don't have any. He said, he thought I was joking. He said, <laughs> Bishop, uh, I don't think you mean it. I say, yes, I mean it. You will be the first person that I'm giving a car. I've given two cars already since I came to America. One to a white family, one to a black family, an African-American family. <sighs> one week after I settled this African-American big giant, I am going for a meeting, a Christian meeting. And the Holy Spirit came inside the car and said, you saw the car you bought for that guy? You bought him a Grand Marquis? I said, yeah. He said, I'm going to give you a brand new Grand Marquis. I want you to start telling people that you're going to be driving a Grand Marquis. I said, where do I go to look for it? He said, don't look for it. I am going to buy you one. I said, okay. So when I reached the place of the meeting, there was this guy from South Africa. I greeted him and his wife. I said, don't mind my car. My car still look good, but I will be driving a Mercury Grand Marquis. He said, do you know how costly? Those are police cars. Those are luxury cars. It's retired people's cars. It's retired people who have money. That's the kind of car they cruise, you know, and so on. Those are really cool. And I saw him, you know, he was, he was making fun of me. He winked at his wife. Like, hmm, okay. We finished the meeting. Two days later, my boss called me into the office and said, a couple came to his office, to the administrative quarters of, of my job, and said, we brought a car for that African guy. <laughs> we brought him a car, and the man said, where is this? He said, look outside. It is that light green Later, top, nice, just fairly used, Mercury Grand Marquis. Big, nice. You touch it, the light comes on. Everything is powered. Say, here is the key. Call him. Here is the title. Put his name there. And they make sure they put so that my boss doesn't change it to somebody else. You know? Yeah, because my boss is the type that has gone through many bankruptcy and so on. And the Baptist still made him... The person in charge of that, I don't know how this thing happened. I don't know. I don't want to go into the politics. So they put my name, they finish everything, they left. So my boss called me. It was five o'clock, job is over. I'm about driving home. He said, can you swing over and come? Can you swing around and come to my office? I said, is anything wrong? He said, no, 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 no. Did you have some chocolate? Because he like bananas, I like chocolate. So he said, did you eat your chocolate today? I said, yeah. I said, did you eat your banana? He is a white elderly guy. He said, yes, I did. I said, okay. <laughs> and I went to his office and he said, well, a couple came here and gave you a car. He, he pulled the blind and said, see that green car? Here's the key. Here's the title. Goodbye. I was, not, I was now stuck with two cars. What did I do? I left the car. I drove because I am five minutes from where I lived to the job. I went and parked. I went and parked the, my old car. Now it's an old car. And I came and walked back 
and now drove this one. I mean, I turn it on, I just drove it. It's a V8. That's my first time of driving V8. That's why I drive V8 cars. I love them because that's what yeah, yeah. I started driving. I just drove it around and enjoyed it. It was like, that's the best car I've ever driven. It was like, I, did, I said, Holy Ghost. So you are not just a spirit. You are real. He said, I told you last week that what you do for others, I will yeah. do for you. That's the first time that I began to hear that, that when you do something good for somebody, God will do it for you. And I got, and when I drove this car to the next meeting we were supposed the South African white family that were winking at me when I said I was, because he was telling, he was, that man was telling the wife, where will this guy have money to go and buy that kind of a car? That was what he was winking. He was making eye and faces at me. When I brought that car, I look at his face. I saw the envy, the jealousy, the hatred. Like, is this guy selling drugs? Is he a thief? How is he a witch? He told me last week, and he got the car this week. And I told him, I said, when the Holy Spirit tells you something, he will back up what he says, if you will say amen to him. Just tell him, bring it on, Holy Ghost, I'm ready. That's why when you are trying to buy a house, and you are running into difficulty, boss, tell the Holy Spirit, if you are blocking me from buying a house and you want to give me a house, go ahead and do your thing. If you are trying to get a car and you are running into things, it, it's not working out, this, that, 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 that. Pause. Tell the Holy Spirit, if you want to buy me a car, if you want to buy me a house, if you want to do this, if you are trying to get married, there are blockages here and there, go back. Stop. Don't push anything. Why? Because let the Holy Ghost move. Let him do what he is a specialist at doing. And that is, he will make the move. He will get it for you. And he will bring it to you. You're trying to open a bank account with this particular bank. They are giving you, you must do this, you must do that. You must, then pull back and wait and say, Holy Ghost, I want you to open that bank account. And he will tell you, open it with the other one. And those people will be begging you to come. Take this. Take credit card. Take this. Do this. Don't you know that we are the most favored people on the earth? Yeah. Baby, I'm worth it. Baby, I'm worth it. That's what you should be singing to the devil and say, listen, I am worth it. The devil did everything to stop the seed of the king from coming through. He still, he failed. And when it comes to you, Satan is going to fail. Okay. You see, what a man could not do in the beginning of biblical history, God told King Saul in the book of 1 Samuel, wipe out the Agagites, wipe out Agagite, the Agagites, wipe them and their seed. Saul didn't do that. He spared them. They rose up against the people of King Saul in the days of Esther. What a, what a man did not want to do. A queen did. A king refused to do what would have, what would have shoot his nation that was forming into greater heights. And he went and played politics. You don't play politics with what God told you to do. That's why American television, pastors and evangelists are in judgment that God has decreed against them because they are playing politics with the truth, with what God asked them to do. They refuse to do it. 
That's why God has started to move away from them. The next thing, he will lay the axe at the bottom of their money. And that will be the end of it. Because when once he dry up the money, that's it. And the person that is making them feel arrogant, God will cut him off, cut off the resources. That's the end of it. When once you cut off the money, everything is gone. And they become as lowly as lambs. And Esther knew how to deal. God wanted to wipe out the seed of the Agagites. Saul didn't do it. And they became a problem to the Israelites and wanted to wipe out the whole nation in the days of Queen Esther. And when Esther saw the opportunity, like Rene just read tonight, Esther wiped out the seed of Haman. She wiped them out. And that was the end of that. The rest were taken as slaves. And their houses, and their gold, and their silver, and their houses, and everything they had, Esther and her people took it over. Let me tell you, those of you who, who are of the black race must be very careful that you do not associate what has happened in the past with the white community of the present. Things do happen. Our people refuse to participate in civilization. That's why they were taken as slaves by everybody who comes along. And it is time that we change the way we think. Because you cannot live in that past. Don't live in that past. It's not, it's not acceptable. <sighs> because different seeds are meeting to accomplish great tasks. Different, different seeds from different races are meeting to accomplish great tasks. A woman did what a man refused to do. The man refused to do it. And his nation knew no peace. A woman did it. And she and her people prospered. Think about that. Mm. The issue of seed is very important. Don't eat all your seed. Plant your seed. There are many of you who don't have children. You do not know that. Somebody has conspired against you. Somebody has conspired against you. In order to stop your greatness. That is coming from within you. And from within your seeds. Somebody is trying to discourage you so as to kill your seed. Don't, don't let spirit of darkness come and sleep with you to stop your seeds. The flow of your money, the flow of your houses, and every other thing. There are some of you way to reach a place that I have to do a ritual for you. I'm not hiding this thing. I'll do a ritual of flow. So that when money begins to flow, it will never stop. No power can stop it. Hmm. Hallelujah. We want to stop this broadcast for here. What is the time, Rene? What is the time? I think we're in the same time zone. 10.55. 10.55? Okay. For those of you, if you are if your phone is going down, please plug it in because we are going to the next session. Um Victoria, what's the next title? Okay, after do not let anybody kill your shiny. Okay, do not let anybody kill your shiny. That's the next thing we are going in for. Okay. So please take a break. 
Every one of you, make sure you put your phone on charge. It might be that after the next one, then we will stop. Then the rest, I will continue. Except uh, those of you who want to continue with me, please, you can continue. Those that want to go to bed, you are tired, please go or make yourself a cup of coffee. So we'll take this little break, two, three minutes, and then we will start again. Rainer, take over. <laughs> 